Give it to me like... This is my journey as a single mom on the outskirts. Miss Trainer. Hey, Melissa. So pay to train. All right, welcome to the Voice Diary Show podcast. I'm very excited. Yes, I'm very excited to have my guest. Carrie Pyle Lawrence, everybody is here today. I met her a couple years ago. She came to my show in LA and she is fabulous. She is a single mom, entrepreneur, a TV producer. She has a podcast, a brand called Diary of a Divorcee. And I mean, I've read some of your blog posts too about, about some of your dating stuff. So I thought the dating world would be great to connect with. But before we do that, just tell us a little bit about your amazingness because you have a whole history of being in TV and you're also having your own, you're, you're an influencer. I mean, you have a lot of followers. So tell us a little bit about your brand and how your divorce kind of, uh, you know, pivoted your brand a little bit. I mean, I didn't even really have my brand until I got divorced. Okay. <laughs> really? But I mean, you were I- in entertainment and I'm a comedian. So that world affected, I'm sure, somehow of your right. Yeah. So, I mean, I was a television producer for a really long time, you know, and I was, you, I spent my entire career telling other people's stories. And when kind of shit hit the fan in my own life, I, it wasn't like my go-to thing, like, oh, I'm going to tell this story. Because honestly, when you're cheated on and left for a younger woman, that's not exactly something that you want to brag about, you know, but no. fuck was- him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a great time, but you know what? Cheers to him because okay, sorry, way better now. Way you better have a now. jersey. You have a jersey friend now, so you're always gonna have the girl that says "fuck him." I'll stab him in his throat. I'm just kidding. I would not stab anybody, but we have your back. Okay, so go. Well, <laughs> it's better that you say it than I do. <laughs> I always get that's exactly it. I will say the fucked up stuff. Okay, so yes, you turned it into a positive thing, and I always do believe, even though I hate the saying, things happen for a good reason. Cheating is fucking horrible, but it does happen for a good reason. So you're thriving from it. And so I mean, you just decide- wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say thriving, you know, but I made lemons out of or lemonade out of lemons, you know. I think that we all I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm my toughest critic. And so, you know, I haven't ridden into the sunset on a white horse or anything like that. Like basically I'm still in my horse and carriage, you know, <laughs> one broken wheel and you know. <laughs> learning with my toolkit trying to repair that shit myself you know so i will tell you that i spent a saturday night crying in the fetal position after watching the new west side story because i will never find a guy like that guy well i basically had a i'm so lonely pity party for myself yesterday as i was walking home from the gym and being like wow it's a sunday and i literally have nobody to spend it with well, okay, so this is interesting. I think you're beautiful, smart, you have a really great career. And from the outside, I'm like, wow, I wish I could have so many followers like her and be like, fit, like you're beautiful. And then like, we're all having the same thoughts, right? Like, so I actually am and not happy to hear that you were feeling that way. But like, I was fucking feeling the same way. And I'm like, what is fucking wrong with me? Like, I got a healthy daughter. We have a, a, I'm on the path I wanted to be at that I like got lost on a couple, like during my marriage. So things will look up and you know what? The carriage, us fixing our own carriage is a good thing, but we want love. Like love is amazing when you have the right person. So um, we're going to talk about too also where we can uh, listen to Diary of a Divorcee and your stuff also at the end because you I just w- listened to your episode with the you got you brought a guy on that you went on a date with. Yeah, I did. And you know, awesome. I have a really funny story about that that I haven't shared yet. So maybe that is a good place to start. Do you want to sh- start? Share it. I'm yeah. excited here. Yeah. So, you know, I brought a guy onto my, um, it's the third episode of my podcast and I really wanted to talk about, you know, dating in your forties and also like bring somebody on because like you, I talk a lot about my disaster dating stories and, um, I kind of wanted to show people that like, I'm not such a disaster by bringing somebody on that actually had like, I had a good experience with him. He had a good experience with me, but it just wasn't a fit. I didn't feel like it was romantic relationship yeah. but I was honest and upfront, and I said hey would you like to be friends and he's like yes he came on my podcast very entertaining definitely outdid me in the whole disaster dating department for sure because some of his like disaster dates were like you know felons and extortion and things like this and I'm like I can't even touch that like <laughs> don't even can't even touch it I so it. um uh so basically after we filmed the podcast well 
hold on, let me back up. During the podcast, I had asked him if he had been seeing somebody. He said, oh, yes, I've been seeing somebody for six weeks. And mind you, this is somebody who I trusted, you know? Right. And at this point, I felt like my intuition was spot on, you know? Okay. So, That's good. Uh-huh. And so he says, oh, yeah, I've been dating for somebody for six weeks. And I had gone out with him probably... I'd say like seven or eight months prior to right. him coming on the podcast and filming. And in, in that amount of time, I had also seen him out with other women and oh. like, because we live in the same area. So yeah. of course like, I'll go over and say hi. And then I, he goes to my gym and I'll see him at the gym and he'll oh, be wow. like kinda bragging to me about like how the girl spent the night or whatever. And I'm like, good for you. High five, dude. Like, okay. Yeah. I don't necessarily need to know all the details, but yeah. You know, now that I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to go <laughs> with the bench press, you know? <laughs> uh, so after the, after we recorded the episode, he said to, oh, hold on. And there was a few details that were important to the story. He said he would be, had been dating her for six weeks, that it was a resurrected relationship. So somebody that he kind of had seen before, but now okay. they're starting fresh. And, um, and that he uh, she, his, I asked him what his biggest concern or if there was any red flags. And he said that she had an OnlyFans account. Okay. Said, okay. I was like, is it an OnlyFans account? Like, Hey, I'm going to document my life. Or is it an OnlyFans account? Like I do weird stuff with my feet. Yeah. And like he, I have a menu of things that I do naked and with my feet. <laughs> yeah. And he said that it was a, you know, she dresses up in lingerie and people pay four ninety nine dollars to get some pictures of her. I'm like, hey, and he's and he it, like, you know, she's a single mom. She needs to, she doesn't have a high paying job and she needs to make some extra money. So she's hustling. And I appreciate that part about her. And I'm like, great. You know, right. that's a great, you're a great guy. Awesome. High five to you. Right. So yeah. after the podcast, he's like, listen, I know you do a lot of social media stuff. I know you have a lot of like the brands that you work for. I do a lot of social media commercials. And so he's like, do you think that maybe you could talk to her? Because I really think that that would be something that she would be interested in doing. And maybe, you know, she could not do as much OnlyFans. I'm like, okay. okay yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm totally open to talking to her. So she invites me to lunch. And she's a beautiful girl, like yeah. boobs, blonde hair, like the epitome of what you would think of like a, right. you know, a Playboy playmate or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, we get to the restaurant and the restaurant has us wait because the table isn't ready. So I'm trying to make conversation with her, but I don't want to talk about the social media commercials because I'm like, this is the bread and butter of our conversation yeah. outside while we're waiting. Right. Right. So I start asking her questions about the guy that I had on the podcast, right? right? Not even thinking anything. Like, I'm pretty sure this is common knowledge at this point and, you know, whatever. And so I sit down and I'm like, so, you know, how long have you and this guy been, you know, together? Like, how did you meet? And she said, oh, well, we met on Facebook. He messaged me, but I lived in Boston at the time. I was like, okay. oh, okay. And she was like, I was like, well, what brought you to L.A.? She said, I moved here for him. Oh, God. And then oh, I God. said, oh, well, how long ago was that? Oh, she no. said, four and a half years ago. <gasps> and then I was like, hmm. And then I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe she moved here four and a half years ago. And like they dated and then they haven't been dating. So I was like, oh, okay, well, how long have you guys been, been together? Mind you, he told me six weeks. Six weeks. Four years. Four years. See, men think it like in dog years in your brain. They've been four years, but that equivalents to six weeks, really. What? Four so years. Did, did she know so that he was on your podcast? She knew that he was on my podcast, but she didn't know that he took me on a date. He asked me not to reveal that part. And of course now he did. I'm starting to figure out why. <laughs> right? And so then I'm like, oh, okay. And so I was like, well, um, and I'm not saying anything to her because I don't want to be right. it's uncomfortable. It's, I don't, this is all like trickling down into me. I don't even yeah. know what's going on. I'm like, holy shit. I'm a big, my intuition is clearly all off. So I said, well, how are things going now? She says, we just moved in together. What? Does yeah. she even have an OnlyFans or is he like pretending that it's not an OnlyFans or he's making the OnlyFans for her maybe? 
I have no idea. So she goes, we finally get sit, we finally sit down. She goes to the bathroom. I text him. I'm like, what the actual F dude? Like for you, she moved here for you. You've been dating four and a half years or four years. And she, you guys live together. Like, and he goes into this whole, well, it's not Boy. that blah, 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 blah. Of course. Like, Are you kidding? So Asshole. Here, the point of the story is here I am thinking that I have it all unlocked, that I can read you. Uh, my intuition is spot on. And yeah. the one person that I trusted to come on was like one of the biggest liars of all. Well, I actually think that's a good piece for your for your diary of a divorcee. And we're talking about right now on Divorce Diaries. I mean, it's amazing. I also feel like this is a pattern, though. I see a lot of men in, in I don't know if he was in his 40s. Was he, is he in his 40s? Yeah. What the fuck? I had a guy in LA too that I came to my show in October. I was thinking, oh my God, this is a cute little crush. And I was trying to get distracted from another crush that I had here that I was dating. They both have the same name. And he comes to the show, we kiss. Then he goes, I don't have any luck with LA men. And he goes, we, we like FaceTime a couple days later with his wedding band on. He comes in the FaceTime with his wedding band on. And this mother effer is in the industry, in production. And he says to me, I said, and he knows what I do. He's a writer and he's also works for like a teamster. And he says to me, um, I said, what? I said, are you married? This was his response. I, I don't have the text up right. He goes, um, the ring threw you off. That was his answer. The ring threw you off. I was like, fuck, it did. And I didn't say anything after that. He wrote like a whole nother reply. I think they like to backpedal. So he's like a backpedaler, this guy too. That So now did you have a, a conversation about like the social media commercials? Like, are they like UGC commercials, right? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I told her how to do it and you know how I do, but like, I don't, I have, after that, I was like, I'm out. This is not my problem. I am getting like as far away from this. It's not, I just, you know, I'm not. Well, I mean, I think that it's it's kind of this is what also scares me. Okay, so we'll go right into the dating. So I don't know if you want to count this as your one of your top three worst because was it this year that you guys went on in the date twenty twenty three? No, it was twenty twenty two because okay. I had him on the podcast probably mid year this year. So. Okay, so it was Frey was like all over right. I I usually okay so. Oh God, these men, I honestly, I, I get a lot of shit for roasting the guys that I date, but now I'm just like, y'all fucking deserve it. So the, the whole reason why I started talking about my disaster dates was because I was seeing so much bad behavior in the online dating scheme and really not even there, like really just in dating in your, like after divorce in general, that yeah. I was like, I cannot believe that these men are getting away with this. And why isn't anybody talking Same. about it? No, I started, I started yeah. talking about it. And you know, every woman is like, I have a story exactly like that. Every man says, you are disgusting. You're a grandma. You will never find anybody. And the reason why it's, it's all your fault. You should have stayed married or something like yeah. really terrible, oh. you know? I've had people say, I look like a man, it's your fault. And first of all, I don't even know if that's a, like insult at this point because there's like so many different genders now. So it's like, whatever I look like, I look like. Like I have the worst, like I've had the worst insults. And then I've also had people who have like done some effed up stuff uh, where they will, um, I don't know if we could, yeah, I've sent me videos saying that they didn't want to be with me. Videos. I, I was like, well, that's great. Um, okay, wait. So let's start with our top three worst dates or if you've dated someone in 2023. Since this is the new year, I want count, we'll count down backwards like a David Letterman style. So I have, all right, we'll start with three. So do you have three off the top of your head that you can think of that we'll go back? Okay. Yes. So top so we'll start the third one i think that my least uh favorite date was a guy that i didn't even really go out with but i met at a comedy show this is how many dates i've had in this year this is very pathetic but um he was his baseball coach i met him in a comedy show from connecticut but he was like working class i have a thing for like guys who are rough around the edges and I thought he was so cute. We exchanged numbers. He walked me to my car. And then the next day he messages me and we're going back and forth. And then he dips out for like three days. I don't hear from him. And then the person that introduced us was like, oh, I bet you he was um, doing a lot of Coca-Cola. I was like, what? And I was like, really? In your 40s, you're doing that much Coke? What? I, I know. So that was 
that was pretty bad. So I call him baseball coach, but I call him like T-ball coach. And I made fun of him in a bit. And then he got went off about it. That was not, I guess, that big of a deal. But that was number three. What's your number three? <laughs> Softball oh cokehead. Or no, baseball cokehead. Okay, what was your number three? <laughs> my number three, I call him St. Patty's guy. This, this, so this is a little bit of a long-winded story. But so I had met him at the gym. And I had just gone up to him because I had seen him there for several months and I'd seen that he'd been losing weight. Oh. And so I went up to him and I was like, I just want to let you know, you're doing a really great job. I've seen you've lost a lot of weight. And I just wanted to say, you know, give you some words of encouragement, like keep it up, you know? Thanks, Carrie. We have touched my triceps. <laughs> no, you know what he said? He was like, oh, why? Because you thought I was just a fat slob before. And I'm like, yes! uh, that's not what I was saying at all. I'm like, this is now awkward. So anyways, we just became kind of like Jim, hi, how are you kind of friends. And he told me that he was um, recently going through a divorce and that he what, had just moved to this area, that he was a, a dad of like three kids and they were, you know, 17 oh you know, 16 and 10 or something like that. And right. that he moved from a nearby city. And I was like, okay, great. And to me, I was thinking like, oh, I can take this man under my wing. I can show him like pieces of how great divorce life can be. So yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to be his like divorce coach or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's in my head. Okay. So then one day it's St. Patrick's day and I'm like, Hey, how's it going? What are you doing? What are you guys going on tonight? And he's like, Oh, nothing. He's like kind of like down and depressed. Oh. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go to a party tonight, a St. Patrick's day party at one of my girlfriend's house. She's divorced too. There'll probably be a lot of divorced people there. Would you like to go? And I'm thinking like, he's just going to come for a friend as a friend. But in hindsight, I'm pretty sure I asked him out on a date. Like, oh. I don't think that he thought that this yeah. was an date. Okay. Oh. So before, so before I, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to get an Uber and I'll come and get you. And then we'll go to the party. I was like, but before that, I'm going to stop at my neighbor's house. So I go to my neighbor's house and I'm hanging out and I'm having a drink for like an hour. And she has another girl there and she's a single mom. And I'm just like sh shooting the shit. And all of a sudden my girlfriend texts me and she's like, oh, she's going through this really bad divorce. Her husband just like left her out of the blue. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. She's like, yeah, they have three kids. I'm like, oh yeah, that totally sucks. Then she's like, these are the ages. I'm like, huh? Oh and no. And then she's like, yeah, and they live in this city. And I'm like, I don't know, oh, no. <laughs> really lining up, you know? <laughs> Who's her, who's her, who's her soon to be ex-husband? What's his name? And she said the first name of this guy that I met at the gym. And I'm like, what? what's his last name? She says the guy, the last name of the guy I met at the gym. So I went to my friend's house, met his soon to be ex-wife. Then I'm like, leave that party. And I have to go pick his ass up. And I'm just like, what the actual F? So that is honestly, I think that's more than a coincidence that you, that ended up, ha I believe in sign. That is crazy. Wait, so they were going to, so was she going to be at the same party that he was going to be at then? No. So okay. I was leaving their party and I was Got going it. to a different party, but I was, so I basically left there. I get in an Uber and I'm thinking to myself on the five minute drive over to pick this guy up. Like, what do I do? Do I tell him? Or do I not tell him? And I'm like, I don't care about this guy. Yeah. I'm not harboring this information. This is not my problem. So he opens up the car door and I'm like, hey, something weird, really weird just happened. He's like, what? I'm like, you're probably going to feel really uncomfortable. He's like, what happened? Oh, I'm no. Like, oh, your ex-wife. And I told him the whole story. And he's like, oh, my God. So we go to this party. And he gets like super drunk and um, I, like, I get kind of drunk too, but it was like fine or whatever. He's yeah. like messing with the music the whole night. It was kind of annoying. I'm like, whatever. We end up going to dinner. Ironically, we see the guy that's on the podcast at the dinner who is out with another redheaded chick that night. This is and like as the world divorce turns. Divorce yeah. Divorce turns. <laughs> yeah. So Wait. then we leave, okay. we leave. I go to jet, drop him off at his, his house in the Uber or whatever. And he's like trying to like, mac on me he's like trying to like kiss me and do all this stuff and i'm like i'm not interested in you he's like well you're gonna regret it you don't know what you're missing out on i'm like Ugh. so turns what? out he basically like abandoned his um kids hasn't seen them in months and like moved to a different city to be with some other chick okay first of all so this guy thinks that you were gonna regret being with some 
semi in semi in shape no no fat shaming to the man but you know what he needs to be hit in a mental gym for saying some shit like that and also like there's a there's a reason why i feel like you somehow met his wife because xy soon to be ex-wife that's crazy i also feel like you are living like a fabulous divorcee life i feel like i watch bravo and drink a corona under the bed <laughs> You had all these fun divorce parties to go to. I feel like I hibernate sometimes, like socially. I don't know if that has to do with I just don't want to meet somebody. Uh, I don't know. There's something going on with me about socializing. But I think that sounds f- fabulous and crazy all at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty crazy for sure and ironic. And, you know, this past year, I haven't dated as much as I have yeah, before. Either. I mean, I used to be like a serial dater. And then this year, I really haven't dated that much because I was re- I started a new business. I have like a social media production company and I do a lot of training. So I help people learn the tools to, um, you know, promote their business on social media and storytelling and things like that. So I really wanted to like, you know, make that happen because I got bills to pay and stuff. Yeah. And, um, and so I really like kind of hunkered down and, you know, really concentrated on that. But to be honest with with you this year starting in 2024 I want to get out to having fun again because it yeah. is lonely and boring and really isolating and even yesterday a lot of my hello you know, <laughs> yeah a lot of my like loneliness you know tear fest was based because it was like I had been spending so much time by myself right you know? and I think that like that's great that you can be alone and rah rah to us but there is yeah. a moment where you're kind of looking around and being like, I'm really tired of this. I can, oh, I, I can be alone. I don't want to do this. Anymore. I like, I don't mind being the alone. It's the intimacy thing. That's it. Cause I have people that will say to me like, yeah, same thing. I have not been out with a lot of people. Although I will say that I am the kind of person that doesn't get over things easily. Like I don't let it go. I'm a very old school Sicilian family that like holds grudges with like the, and that I can't let shit go when it happens to me with men specifically. So like this year there was the, the, coach that I didn't really go out with then there was number two right who was religion guy religion guy he's a nice nice... Ah. (laughs) I know I know I know but like I actually am still friends with him he's gonna hate me for saying this because he doesn't like me talking about him on the podcast so guess what I'm not talking badly about him anymore I was really upset with him last year because I wanted us to date and we had this great connection but he's very religious I'm religious but okay so he's Jewish I'm Catholic I would have probably I don't want to say I would have converted but I'll be real with you if I fell in love I probably would have converted (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with that because I actually find a lot of the Jewish faith um, very, like I'm very intrigued by it and I wanted to learn more. And for him, it was like kind of a deal breaker. And also the fact that I talk about the men in my life on my show. So he didn't like that either. So I guess there was that too. <laughs> well, there was definitely a big of that, but that was a big part was a religion. And um, he didn't even want to meet me for coffee. Like he, and then finally we actually did see each other again for my birthday. Like he took me to see a Broadway show. Oh, that's nice. But because there was another guy in the picture. So he felt like Uh, safeguarded. So is he, has he ever been married before? He's divorced his two kids. Um, It just makes me so, it it makes me feel, I I always wonder about somebody who really holds on to like religious ties. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, typically if you grow up in a really religious household, like divorce is pretty shunned upon. So it's like, if you're going to make that kind of concession, then why aren't you making a concession with the label of the type of woman that you're dating? Because it's like, just because she wasn't born with like this political affiliation doesn't mean that she's not a good woman or that you shouldn't give her a shot, you know? Thank you. <laughs> it makes no. no sense. It's like kind of, it's kind of hypocritical. You know what I mean? Like it, it is. He, he, it is, it was, it really just like upset me because we had a really nice connection. I mean, I always feel like that with every guy now uh, that I have feelings for. Um, so religion guy is number two. You gotta stop texting him so much. I text, I, <laughs> I was going to bring up somebody that we know, but I'm not going to bring him up. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying that because you say we only met like one time or something, but oh. we have like this really great connection. So to me, I'm like, okay, well, you're making a, uh, it, to me, I think that texting a lot before you meet somebody is a false connection. And oh, yeah. I think that you don't actually start dating somebody until you actually meet them in real life. And yes. I think it's setting up a huge 
um, it's a, it's setting up a huge expectation yeah. of that moment where you meet. And then and also then you have like to. forwarding the, con- it's like almost like dating in reverse. It's like, you're supposed to meet somebody, then get to know them, not get to know them and then meet somebody. Okay. Know? So we, we did meet first. He, the religion oh, okay. guy and I met, he came to divorce diaries. He saw, he came in New York city. Um, I was like praying for a nice Jewish man. This is a whole thing I do. Cause I have a friend who's a divorced rabbi. And I was like, why can't we? he lives in LA actually. And I'm like, why can't I meet someone like him in New York? And this guy walks into my show and we stay connected after that. So that's how we met. But then he actually, and I, like, he was the first guy, I feel like he texted me just as much as I texted him. Cause I could have a habit of spiraling out of text control. Uh-huh. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he he was texting as much as I was. But now there's another the number one guy we'll get to in a second. I want to hear your number two because there is a texting issue with the number one guy. But that was recently. Um, okay, what's your number two? Trump. Okay, so my number two we we call him Doctor Surf. Okay, Ooh. because he is like a he was an emergency room doctor at a local hospital but he also had like water on the brain like if you talk to him you wouldn't know that he's a doctor because like oh yeah like it's so gnarly like this surf is just so very california i love it <laughs> yeah so we call him dr surf and you know i had um i had he was one of those people you know how like the guys that you meet online they always come back he was like an always come backer right so oh. so we had texted like a while ago you know briefly never met up and then out of the blue he ended up and I wasn't even on dating apps at the time and he had ended up texting me randomly and I had said oh hey what's going on he's like hey do you want to go out sometime I'm like how long have you been broken up with your girlfriend he's like oh like two weeks how did you know I had a girlfriend I was like because I'm pretty sure that's why you're texting me (laughs) I would have never thought to ask that that's very smart and so I love he, that. Okay. And so he, so I already knew that he was basically like on the rebound or whatever. And I was just not willing to fill that role. So I was like, we can go and hang out, but like, I'm not going to be your rebound. And he's like, all right, whatever. So we end up finally meeting up and we um, just met for like Mexican food and margaritas. And it was super fun. And we had a great time and we had like great chemistry. And he actually was super hot, which pro- probably you would, this probably shocks you, but I don't typically date like super hot guys. Like I really tend to date guys that are pretty average. Ugly, have, sexy, like, ugly, huh? sexy. I like, I like ugly, sexy guys. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I mean, I, it's not like, I like hot guys, but they usually have the personality of a two by four. And I think <laughs> connection and personality is really important, yes. you know, and I want to be engaged and have like meaningful conversation. And, right. And somebody who has been like super hot their whole lives, they didn't ever flex their personality muscles. So it's right. just really boring. So Anyways, I was impre- I was impressed that he had a personality. Yes, had fun. So he asked me out again, and I was like, "Okay, well, let's do something adventurous. Let's like go do something." He's like, "Have you ever done mountain biking before?" And I'm like, "No, I have never mountain biked." He's like, "Well, do you have a mountain bike?" I'm like, "Yes, I have a mountain bike." He's like, "Let's go mountain biking." I'm like, "Okay." Ooh. So I was like, "This could be fun." So we yes. met on like a Saturday during the day. And I actually made a video about like a few videos about this whole thing. So we met on Saturday during the day and I'm driving. He gives me like a mapped pin number. So, you know, where you set the pin. So I'm like, yeah, driving. I'm like in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around. I'm like, I Ooh. really hope I am not going to get murdered here. You know no. I mean? Well, you share your location with one of your friends or something, right? Well, I didn't do that. I just like, <laughs> I'm like, I already met him. He's a doctor. He can't, I don't, it was a bad idea. So anyway. <laughs> So I show up and he is like all mountain bikes out. And I literally barely have a helmet that fits my head. Oh and he's God. Like, and, he's, and he's like, okay, I, tr- I tracked our whole mountain bike expedition. And he had like a map and everything, which I thought was really cute, but it just finished raining like for months on end in LA. So yeah. all of the uh, trails had this big like crevice in them where all the water had gone and like flowed oh, through them. So it was like you're trying to bike on a trap, like on a tightrope, you know, like either you go on one side that's like this big or the other side that's this big, or you just fall into the ground, right? Oh my and God. Everything was like super wet. So, long story short, we go on this mountain bike thing. He takes me through like treacherous territory, like through the mud. My I'm like in mud up to my shins. For 10 miles all what? up. So rigorous, so hard that I would say that 60% of the mountain biking was me hiking up a hill, uh, uphill 
with my mountain bike and him too. He was too, it was too steep to even ride uphill on it. And so we basically hiked while pushing mountain bikes. I would have fallen apart. Have you, do you bike regularly? Like I don't. So like no, I would have fallen this, apart. I've never mountain bike in my life. And I told him before I went, I was like, hey, take it easy on me. I've never done this before. And freaking ding dong shows up with like a 10 mile, like level 10 mountain biking experience. So at the end of it, he was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired. And we end up having beers afterwards. And he's like, oh yeah, let's do it again. I was like, okay. And I never heard from him again. So, so basically he almost killed me and then he ghosted me. He's like a flex on his fucking manliness. Fuck him. Dude, mountain bike, surf doctor. You can go fuck yourself. You come to New Jersey or New York and I find out who you are. I'm going to put you through a fucking subway with no Metro card. Fuck you, buddy. That is an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, wait. So we have seven minutes left because I noticed my Zoom time is running out. Carrie, you have amazing stories. I feel like I, I can't wait to come back out to L.A. so we can do this in person. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. So number one. <laughs> Okay. The number one man I'm trying to do a drum roll on my window, uh, my window sale <laughs> is um, I call him corporate guy, corporate guy. I have a thing for Latinos. He was Latino, but he's like, he sounds very like Arlo Marshall like that. Not doesn't have his Hispanic accent that I usually get attracted to. Anyway, we were friends for three years and he asked me out in August. Second divorce he's on. I know. And he asks me out. I said, fine. We have great sex, great dating, but he doesn't like to text or call. Mm -hmm. So this last five months have been on and off again because he doesn't, again, like the way I do jokes about the guys I date. And I might have told him that I'm going to take his balls and deliver them to his face if he doesn't text me back on my Instagram story. So he didn't like that. Okay, I get it. That was wrong. I changed. I said, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk to the person first before I do that, blah, blah, blah. This mother effer for five and a half months has me going back and forth with him. This is what the kicker was. He, he travels a lot for work, like a lot. And I feel like it's an issue and he doesn't like to text when he's away. So I refused to have sex with him unless I knew we were dating. And then I gave in like a moron after Thanksgiving, we had sex. He leaves for Boston the next day and I don't hear from him and I'm having a panic attack. I'm like, I feel, and just a lot of it, of it is because of my trauma from my past, but I'm having a straight up panic attack and he knows about my trauma too. <laughs> and he's like, I don't give a fuck. He's like, I'm not, and he calls me when he gets back. He's like, I didn't want to text you because when I was with my ex-wife, all I would do is respond to her texts and that was feeding a beast. I said, what do you mean feeding a beast? He's like, because as soon as I would text her, she would keep texting me back. And I'm like, but I feel like you're deserting me. And like, it was a horrible, horrible feeling. And so I told him that I don't want to talk to him anymore, but I felt like such a dipshit for giving in and having sex with a person that doesn't want to talk to me. That's my number one corporate guy. My number one is very similar. We call it flip flop. And it was somebody that I had had really great dates with. Like I really liked him, but it was, it was the same thing. Like we would have a really great date and then he would just go dark for a week. And we had opposite kids schedules. So we could only see each other like once every two weeks and to go two weeks without any communication with somebody. And just to have them call you like two days beforehand and be like, I'm going to be in town. Do you want to hang out? It was just like, didn't feel good, you know? Yeah. And I kind of communicated, hey, I want to like, I want to like have more communication or maybe see each other more. I offered to like change up my kid's schedule or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. He, he kind of, I call him flip flop because at one point he was like, okay, I really want to try and date. And I was like, great. And then when it came time to trying and dating, he was like, oh. And so it's just like, it was like, I can't date somebody that doesn't want to date me. So I just told him to take a hike, but what's even worse is that now I like totally resurrected it and now I'm like seeing him again and I'm sure it's like a terrible idea and now I have to figure out how to get out of it again okay I want to send good energy your way sending good energy for him I hope he's not like my corporate guy who hasn't talked to me in a month because when I told him he hurt my feelings and I didn't go off like Michelle Trana usually goes off I thought that would have a better effect it didn't um I did post I'll send you the, I did post a video of me on the street asking people. He I sent him a nude picture and it took him five hours to answer. That was probably a bad sign. I know. Yeah. I just don't, <laughs> you know, I always feel like I'm going to give the energy 
whatever energy that they're giving to me, I'll reciprocate, but I'm not chasing these ding dongs anymore. I'm not going to put forth the effort. I'm not going to try and convince myself that like, Oh, I need to set the tone. Screw that. You're either into me or you're not. And if you're not into me, there's another ding dong right around the corner. And that ding dong is probably thicker and bigger. Anyway, (laughs) here we go. Carrie, I don't want to cut our time short because it's such an amazing episode, but I really enjoyed having you. I hope we can do this again and possibly in person. We have a quick, okay, so what you, which one do you want to do? Carrie, ask Michelle anything or a deal breaker or describe perfect divorce guy. Uh, I don't know. You choose. All right. Carrie, ask Michelle anything. We'll start with that one. Okay. So how do you. Well, I have a question. Like, how do you deal with the fact that like you talk about your dating life? Because I have the same thing and I'm always, yes. I usually don't tell them right away yeah. and I don't mm-hmm. give them my Instagram, but then I run into this whole thing where, what, what, what point do you tell them? Yeah. And then it, it creates this anxiety. So like, how do you? Okay. This is a great question. I tell them, I tell them right away because, um, and I, if, and, and the part is in the last year, I've noticed that I have to actually talk to them beforehand and say, are you comfortable with me sharing any of this? Because what it ends up is it ends up like, like what happened with corporate guy, he got upset and we were friends. So I didn't want to fuck up the friendship. So I do tell them right away, uh, clearly I'm single. So it's not the right person that's come into my life. And I have put the guilt on myself and friends have told me, well, maybe you should cool off with that. But what I've realized is, and I have a medium, and we could talk about this in another episode, the medium was like, spirit does not want you to stop doing what you're doing. And I do believe what you're doing is great and authentic and too, true to yourself. So I would say, tell them, you know, up front, if you want, if it comes up, but probably it's probably better because that's just who you are and this is what your brand is. So I tell them right away. Okay. That's a good point. I mean, I think I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it without it. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, look at all these funny videos that I make. They're so exactly. fun, you know? And if they get scared, be like, well, at least I'm not this comedian lady who's really fucking roasting. <laughs> Say, tell, us where everybody- <laughs> tell them where we can find you and how to follow the Diary of a Divorcee. Boom. Go. Okay. You can follow me on TikTok at Diary of a Divorcee. You can follow me on my website at www.diaryofadivorcee.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram at Carrie Kyle Lawrence. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you so much for ha- for coming on to Divorce Diaries and for two fabulous. We should do like a redhead blonde thing on the street when I come to LA. If you're game for doing d- stuff I'm on the game. street. Yes. I'm game for whatever. You invite <laughs> me and I'll be there. All right, great. Thank you so much, Carrie. You Thank guys you so stay much. tuned for more Divorce Diaries. Bye. <laughs> Here's to a good 2024 and boyfriend. Yes. yes. <laughs>